Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. It's been well over a year and a half since my last video in the Learning and Evolving from a Past Practitioner series. Today, I will resume the series and talk about some important practitioners once in a while. Today, we will talk about Shang Yunxiang, a prominent Xingyi practitioner in history. I'm neither a part of the Shang style lineage nor do I actively focus on Shang Yunxiang's practice on a regular basis. But his practice was very popular in Tianjin, and one of my own Xingyi teacher, Mr. Hu Jinling, held it in high regard. I realized that Shang's practice is very close to some of the old Hebei training methods which is worth of attention and discussion. But first, let's get high on tea. By the way, tea drinking is a lifestyle related topic. I hope more and more people will consume this healthy beverage. Tea is an acquired taste and with time, you will enjoy it more and more. This week's tea is Tai Shan Hong Cha a very unique red tea from Tai Mountain of Shandong. Before going any further, I'd like to tell you that in the Chinese tea market, tea production regions are in southern China. However, some regions such as Shandong began producing different types of teas decades ago. Even though the tea grew in Shandong was not considered original compared to the southern tea producing regions. The special environmental conditions in the new tea growing regions imparted unique flavors to the tea products and made them just as good if not better. Tai Shan Hong Cha or Red Tea of Tai Mountain is one of them. I hope different teas produced in the Shandong area will get their well-deserved popularity in the future. In many prior videos, I mentioned that besides the tea processing methods, environmental factors such as temperature, soil, and water quality, the intensity of sunlight, and even the height of a mountain can all contribute to the flavor of the tea products. For example, tea trees growing in high mountains tend to be more delicious due to a higher level of cyanide in tea leaves. So, tea bushes growing in Thai mountain are more flavorful due to their unique environmental factors. For example, cold weather but stronger sunlight make tea high in polyphenols, giving it a stronger flavor, thus making it attractive to many tea drinkers who prefer that style of tea. Traditionally, red tea, often mistakenly called black tea in the West, uses a specific fermentation process. However, red tea produced in Shandong uses a combination of the traditional red tea method and the Wuyi Mountain tea method. This is the new processing method that contributes to the unique flavor of a Tai Shan red tea, a tea flavor which is strong but lasts longer. This is why more and more tea drinkers have been appreciating Tai Shan red tea in the last couple of decades. By the way, I would like to point out that the tea processing method is a critical factor in classifying tea. Compared to the origin of tea leaves, the tea processing method is a more determining factor. So, in the future, whenever you drink a new Chinese tea called by a specific tea name, two questions should come to your mind. First, where did the tea leaves come from? And second, what was the processing method? Used for this tea. These two questions are used by tea experts in evaluating 
T quality? Of course, these two questions are not easy to answer by a tea drinker since it requires information, knowledge, and experience. By the way, when I first drank Thai Mountain Red Tea, I was amazed by its nice flavor and started to pay attention to different teas produced in that region. This is a box of Thai Mountain Red Tea. The tea leaf is solid and well fermented. Check out the tea decoction. A nice bright color indeed. Tai Shan Hong Cha is best brewed with 90 degrees Celsius water for 30 seconds to 1 minute. You can brew this tea multiple times at a similar water temperature with a few extra seconds for each subsequent brew. So, I hope you will give Thai Mountain Tea a chance if you haven't already. I'm sure you will fall in love with it. Do let me know your experiences with the Thai Mountain Tea in the comment section. With that, let's now talk about a very important Xingyi practitioner in history, Shang Yunxiang. Topics covered in today's video include first, brief history of Shang Yunxiang. Second, Shang Yunxiang's practice. Third, key characteristics of Shang's Xing Yi training. Fourth, demonstration. Fifth, takeaways and inspirations. So, without any further ado, let's get started. Topic 1 Brief History of Shang Yunxiang. Shang Yunxiang was born in 1864 in Shandong Province also the birthplace of Confucius, an important philosopher in China. At the age of 11, he moved to Beijing. In Beijing, he first practiced Gongli Quan, an external style of martial art that was popular in northern China. He practiced this style diligently for about 10 years. One day, he met a student of Zhou Mingtai and competed with him. Zhou Mingtai studied Xing Yi with Liu Qilan, a famous Xing Yi master and teacher. In the competition, Shang Yunxiang lost the fight. From then on, he started acknowledging the practicality of Xing Yi. He decided to practice Xing Yi and devoted the rest of his life to practicing teaching and promoting this style. Shang Yunxiang heard about Li Sunyi and his reputation in Xing Yi, so eventually he went to Tianjin to practice Xing Yi with Li Sunyi. By the way, Li Sunyi is one of the most important figures in Xing Yi history. I have mentioned his name countless times in my videos. I also have a dedicated video on him titled Learning and Evolving from Past Practitioners 2, Li Sunyi. Do check it out if you'd like to know more about him. Link is in the description. Li Sunyi initially did not want to teach him at all due to Shang's physical condition. It was not at all even worse according to many documents and testimonials of Xing Yi practitioners of different generations. He did not have a solid body structure. In Xing Yi, there was a strict tradition in Tianjin that weak candidates would not be accepted into the school to protect the reputation of Xing Yi back then. So, Li Sun Yi was just following tradition. Then, after Shang Yunxiang demonstrated his uh, uh, determination to practice Xing Yi under Li Sunyi, a great teacher of his time, Li Sunyi accepted him as a student but only taught him some basic Xing Yi practice. Regardless, he practiced with great effort and his rapid progress impressed Li Sunyi. So, 
Li Sunyi began to regard him seriously and started teaching him systematically. So for the next ten plus years, Shang Yunxiang followed Li Sunyi and eventually became one of the most popular and accomplished Xing Yi practitioners of his time. Unfortunately, since he devoted most of his time to practice, he was left with little time to manage his business and eventually went bankrupt. Even so, he continued improving his practice uninterrupted. Later on, he passed the military entrance exam and became a low-ranking military officer and worked for the Qing Dynasty government. Besides his day job, he dedicated most of his spare time to Xing Yi practice. He practiced Xing Yi at the prayer hall of a local temple. As we have all noticed, Xing Yi practice easily wears off the shoes, and the shoes were expensive back then. So he had to practice with bare feet. With time, he left two lines of marks on the bricks of the prayer hall. Since he used the temple hall to practice without wearing shoes and had a strong martial stepping power, many people called him Tie Jiao Fu or Iron Feet Buddha. A nice name for a martial artist. The legendary story goes that he could break small stones with bare feet. With time, he became famous. Li Lianyang, the grand supervisor of the Qing Dynasty's Empress Cixi, heard of Shang Yunxiang's martial skills and hired him as his bodyguard. Shang Yunxiang served in that position for three years, and from then on, Shang Yunxiang became financially stable. He also received instruction from Guo Yunshen for about a month. Guo Yunshen was one of the Li Luoneng's eight famous disciples. Li Luoneng, as you all know, was the founder of Xing Yi, which made Guo Yunshen the second generation of Xing Yi practitioners. Guo was famous for his half-step Beng Quan or half-step crashing fist. Guo Yunshen was said to develop his half-step crashing fist whilst locked in prison with fetters. Shang Yunxiang improved his Xing Yi practice dramatically after meeting with Guo Yunshen. Since then, he officially began teaching students in Beijing, Tianjin, and other cities. He passed away in 1937. Shang Yunxiang's teaching career spanned many decades, in which he taught many good students, including his own daughter. His teaching continues to be practiced by many Xing Yi practitioners even today. Now, let's discuss Shang Yunxiang's unique practice in the next topic. Topic 2 Shang Yunxiang's Practice. Shang Yunxiang learned directly from Li Sunyi. His style carries the general characteristics of the traditional Hebei style. Furthermore, Shang Yunxiang's Xing Yi is distinctive in its intense body structure compared to many other branches of Xing Yi. This intense body structure is conducive to great Fa Jin. In other words, Shang style Xing Yi is very famous for its Fa Jin training. I have to say that all of the good Shang style practitioners I have met have been great at Fa Jin. That's why Xing Yi practitioners in many regions of China consider anyone with poor Fa Jin calling themselves Shang style practitioners to be nothing but a misrepresentation. To reach this level, Shang Yunxiang developed a training system suitable for developing Xing Yi power, 
which can be achieved as well as demonstrated. So, Fajin training is not only a means to practice, but also a means to demonstrate the result of a correct and good practice. More importantly, Shang Yunxiang emphasized the importance of Gang Jin training or heart power training. Very often, many people mistakenly believe that since Xing Yi is an internal style, a training method should be more quote unquote internal by quote unquote soften the power and the strength. According to Shang Yunxiang, soft force is only a natural result, but the training method should focus on hard power of a Gang Jin. He even said, quote, Ren Zai Yo Sanshin Yang Shou Ju Da Ta Sanshin Gang Jin. End quote. Translation If I have 30 more years of time, I would practice 30 more years of Gang Jin or hard power training. End translation. So, emphasis on Gang Jin training is the most important Shang style practice. Of course, it does not go against soft power in an internal style, but any Shang style practitioner should be able to demonstrate Gang Jin or hard power in Fa Jin. That's the basic criterion to be considered Shang style. Unfortunately, many people nowadays claim to be Shang style practitioners without following Shang Yunxiang's teaching, which is the willful misrepresentation. Fortunately, in China, no legit practitioner in the Shang school claims Gang Jin or Hard Force to be a low-level power since Shang Yunxiang himself made that famous statement about Gang Jin training. Shang Yunxiang reorganized the Xing Yi training system according to his training experience. For example, while well, a typical Hebei style Pi Quan or metal fist uses an open palm structure to strike, Shang Yunxiang's style uses a fist structure. So, Shang Yunxiang categorized the open palm structure Pi Quan as Ying Zhuo or Eagle Capturing. Even nowadays, traditional Shang style practitioners in China still follow his teaching by differentiating the practice between metal fist and ego capturing. Again, this was the training method set by the Shang style founder himself. I'd like to show you a small video clip of Shang style Pi Quan and Ying Zhuo or metal fist and ego capturing demonstrated by Liu Junfeng. Liu Junfeng is one of the best Shang style Xing Yi practitioners in China. He is the son-in-law of Shang Zhirong, the daughter of Shang Yunxiang. So, Liu Junfeng is the relative of Shang Yunxiang, as well as the later generation of Shang style Xing Yi. Let's watch the video. That was Liu Junfeng, one of the best representatives of Shang style Xing Yi today. Shang Yunxiang trained in many Xing Yi weapons. He also emphasized the concept of Ren Xie He Yi or human and weapon unified as one. So, Shang's weapon form and the bare hand form are closely related. Speaking from observation and limited training experience, Shang Style's weapon training reflects his training principles of bare hand practice. For example, Shang Style's weapon practice is not just moving a weapon around, but 
really reflects Shang Steel's unique body method in a weapon format. It is worth noting that during the war against Japan in the Second World War period, some troops in the Chinese military practiced the saber as part of their military training, based on Shang Yunxiang's Xing Yi saber practice. By the way, Shang Yunxiang was, prior to training, a physically weak young man. He worked really hard to reach a very advanced level in Xing Yi practice. He dedicated his entire adult life to Xing Yi practice and the teaching. He was only about 160cm tall or 5'3". He was a highly skilled martial artist and despite his physical shorter stature, he won many fights in his lifetime. A truly outstanding achievement in the martial art community. It is very hard to introduce such an important practitioner and his style in such a short time. Bear in mind, Shang Yunxiang emphasized Gang Jin or hard power training in Xing Yi practice, which is the fundamental principle of his style. Now, let's summarize some key characteristics of Shang Yunxiang's Xing Yi practice, which brings us to the next topic. Topic 3. Key Characteristics of Shang's Xing Yi Training Shang Yunxiang emphasized Chen Jin Ba Gu. He believed that a martial artist must work on Chen Jin Ba Gu in order to strengthen the body and develop martial power. Chen Jin Ba Gu means stretch the tendon and pull the bone. Shang Yunxiang applied Chen Jin Ba Gu in his Santi stance and other key practice of Xing Yi in order to ensure the body's readiness to release the power in martial combat. Check out my video titled Internal Style Concept 13 Opening Hips, Shoulders, and Ribcage, in which I have explained Chen Jin Ba Gu in detail. Link is in the description. Shang Yunxiang also emphasized stepping practice. He created the term Tang Jin or wading power. It is the term used to describe the practice and the result of Xing Yi stepping. When working on Fa Jin, the foot should step forward and inward just like wading on the ground, so that power will transfer to the opponent's body and overwhelm the opponent right away in combat. So, it is not only a stepping method but directly related to Shen Fa or the body method. For example, Shang Xiao Xing Yi utilizes another principle, Huai Chong Bu or step like a sophora worm, which involves both Shen Fa and Bu Fa. I have to say that Shang's style of body method is the result of his stepping method. Any Shang style practitioner liking Fa Jin should definitely reevaluate their stepping method and likewise improve their stepping and overall practice. This is the key factor indeed. Again, Fa Jin in Shang Yunxiang's Xing Yi is its main advantage and characteristic. Shang style's practice is based on Fa Jin, and Fa Jin makes that style practical, popular, and systematic. Shang style's hard power training method is the foundation of all other aspects of that style and deserves special attention. Let me quote a famous Xing Yi proverb followed by its explanation from Shang Yunxiang students. This proverb is quote, Ying Da Ying Jin Wu Zhe Lan. End quote. Translation Hard striking and hard entering without blocking. End translation Ying Da or hard striking and Ying Jin or hard entering. 
aim to apply Xing Yi power no matter how the opponent attacks you, such as slow, fast, static, dynamic, soft, hard, blocking, without blocking, and so on. So, power should be released as soon as the attacking part of your body makes the contact with the opponent's body. So, fast and powerful Fa Jin is the spirit of Shang style Xing Yi. In other words, if you do not have a Shang style Fa Jin, then you are neither a beginner in Shang style or not a practitioner of Shang style. Topic 4 Demonstration Today, I'd like to demonstrate a Xing Yi Fa Jin practice from Shang Yun Xiang created by Xue Dian. Bear in mind, this can be practiced by practitioners of any branches of Xing Yi, including the Shang style. Ok, Xiang Xing Shu, Xuan Method. Topic 5 Takeaways and Inspirations. Shan Yunxiang, though physically weak in his earlier years, overcame all the challenges and achieved a very advanced level in Xing Yi practice, and eventually, his practice came to be recognized at Shang style Xing Yi, a branch of Hebei style. It is a very well preserved and well developed style in China with high level practitioners even today. Overcoming many physical challenges, not to forget the accompanying mental and emotional challenges, to achieve strong and powerful martial art practice through decades of hard training, is the feat not many people can claim to match. So, Shang Yunxiang's life story is an inspiration to us all. It demonstrates a centuries-old Chinese tradition about martial training in dealing with physical strength. If you are not strong, do not worry, you just keep working on it with effort and eventually, you will reach your goal. But you have to strengthen your body first, then focus on skills. Martial skills are based on martial power and the martial skills will help a practitioner apply their martial power more effectively. But still, martial power is the foundation. Shang Yunxiang always emphasized his martial power training, which is the reason behind his success story. Shang Yunxiang also emphasized the concept of unity of a weapon and bare hand form as one, an old concept used in Chinese martial arts for thousands of years. Shang styles originally integrates bare hand and weapons training together toward developing martial power and skills and does not use them merely for fancy shows, as is unfortunately often the case nowadays. Shang Yunxiang's emphasis on Gang Jin or hard power training is not only the iconic characteristics of this style, but also the mechanism behind the Shang style's powerful Fa Jin. Again, his Fa Jin is the result of Shang style Shen Fa or body method, not the other way around. Unfortunately, some Contemporary Wushu influenced Shang style practitioners nowadays in China lack Shang Yunxiang's Shen Fa or body method training, which also leads to a lack of Fa Jin, resulting in an overall poor quality practice. Doesn't matter if they call themselves Shang style. A key takeaway buyers be aware. If you are interested in learning Shang style Xing Yi, make sure you choose the right teacher. To state the obvious, Shang style is a great style of Xing Yi. 
I hope more and more people will know about this style and practice it. I will talk more about Shang style and its teachers as well as promote good Shang style practice in the future. That brings us to the end of today's video. Thank you for watching, see you next time, and enjoy your practice.